What if you need two voltmeters for your little science project, but you have only one multimeter? Well, why not just build one yourself? Hello guys, my name is Sorin and today I'm gonna show you how to make a simple DC voltmeter for less than 5 euros. For this project we'll need a little panel voltmeter, obviously, and we want to make it rechargeable. So we need a TP4056 charging module, a lithium battery and the boost converter. Because the battery's nominal 3.7 volts needs to be increased to a minimum voltage of 4.5 volts, which is the minimum supply voltage for the panel voltmeter. If the battery doesn't have over discharge protection, you can use a TP4056 module with battery protection. But I want to make this project easier and cheaper, so I have another solution. At the local supermarket, I found this one cell power bank for 2.4 euros, which has a 5 volts output. It's perfect for my project. Let's test it. It works fine. At first I wanted to use this bigger panel voltmeter, but then I've realized it's not that precise. Below 10 volts it has only one decimal place. The little one has an accuracy with two decimal places. Back to the cheap power bank. The battery apparently has a capacity of 2000 mAh. I highly doubt that. Of course the next logical step is to take a look inside it. This circuit board is important for us, it replaces the charging module, the boost converter and it has a battery over discharge protection. The 18650 lithium ion cell is enough for my project, but it's too big, so I'm gonna replace it with this smaller lithium polymer cell, which I've salvaged from a broken mobile phone. So because I'm using half of the power bank, I can say that I've spent only 1.2 euros on the volumeter's power supply. I'll use the 18650 cell in another project. Now let's try the voltmeter with the new battery. 3.7 volts for the LiPo cell and 5 volts for the power bank. But the power bank is not actually activated. The voltmeter is using too little current. I'm gonna use this 120 ohms 5 watts resistor as a dummy load. When the power bank detects the dummy load, it powers on and the blue LED lights up. So, how little current does the voltmeter actually need? Let's find out. Less than 10 milliamps. Let's do another useless test. How much current from the LiPo cell is used by the boost converter plus the voltmeter? The same, less than 10 milliamps. But if we connect the dummy load, it powers on and it's using up to 80 milliamps. Wow, right? Enough measurements, let's get on with the build. What are the minimum requirements to build a voltmeter? A panel voltmeter, half of the power bank, a lithium battery, red and black cables with crocodile pliers, and a switch. I'm using half of the crocodile pliers, so they cost me only half the price for this project. The total price is less than 5 euros. We start by unsoldering the battery pins. Cut the pliers from one end of the cables and prepare some wires for the internal connections. When you solder the wires on the battery, try to make it quick. The heat generated by the soldering gun can damage the battery. Solder the battery and voltmeter wires to the charging module and try it. By now you've probably noticed the biggest problem with this little panel voltmeter. If the ambient light is too bright, you can't see the numbers on it. But don't you worry guys, I have a solution for you. This is a semi-transparent plastic folder. I'm gonna cut a piece of plastic from it to cover the voltmeter. I'm pretty sure that you can see the difference. It's time for the voltmeter enclosure. 
you can put everything in a simple plastic box, like a battery case. Or you can create your own personalized box. This is the schematic for my voltmeter enclosure. I'll make it out of 4mm plywood. I mark the panels which have a 70mm side. Then I measure the panel voltmeter and the switch to mark the holes. To cut the plywood I'll use an electric jigsaw with the finest blade. If you're wondering why I've started with the holes and not the panels, it's because I can rotate or hold down the plywood sheet much better if it's bigger. The LED needs a 3mm hole. We can smooth the rough edges with the help from a small wood file. After cutting all the panels, we can round off the exterior edges with 200 grit sandpaper. The fastest way to glue the panels is with a hot glue gun. The front of the power bank can be cut off and used as a support for the charging module. I've already cut the necessary hole in the back of the voltmeter box. The voltmeter box is almost done, but I think it will look much better with two coats of black paint. You can make a simple rectangular box, it's not mandatory to make it like mine, but I'm sure this voltmeter will look pretty nice at the end. While the paint dries, I solder all the wires. The two tiny LEDs will be replaced with a bipolar LED. There are two wires for the panel voltmeter, three for the LED and two for the battery. The plastic cover can be glued to the voltmeter display with super glue or two component adhesive. The two leads can be inserted through the already made holes in the front of the box and will each get a nut to prevent pulling them out. I'll use some shrinking tubes for the LED and its pins will be cut to different lengths to be soldered easier. I'll stick the LiPo cell and the charging module with hot glue. It's time for the switch. It will be soldered on the positive wire between the charging module and the panel voltmeter. The voltmeter display will be held in place with hot glue. And don't forget about the LED. For the back panel we cannot use hot glue. In the time required to spread it, the glue will harden. So I'll use two component adhesive. And now behold the finished product, I'm quite pleased with its looks. The black paint gives it a vintage appearance. You can use it to measure direct current voltages of maximum 30 volts. You can even use it as a mini power bank, but not for long. I don't think the battery has more than 1 amp hour. The crocodile pliers are a good choice, they can be connected very easy to any metal pins, like for example when you try to revive a dead lithium cell. 
The voltmeter can be recharged like any other power bank with a USB cable. While it's recharging, I'll give it four self-adhesive rubber pads. Now you can even move the table with it. That's useful, right? When the charging is completed, the red LED stops blinking. You can see the precision difference between the two panel voltmeters. And now I can finally use my multimeter in parallel with my voltmeter to monitor the input and output voltages of this boost converter. Even the cat likes my DIY voltmeter. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more DIY projects, don't forget to subscribe.